see your doctor right away as some can be life-threatening. Tell your doctor if you have a history of heart or blood vessel problems or if you develop new or worse symptoms. Get medical help right away if you have symptoms of a heart attack or stroke. Use caution when driving or operating machinery. Common side effects include nausea, trouble sleeping, and unusual dreams. With Chantix and with the support system, it worked for me. Ask your doctor if Chantix is right for you. Discover what makes a Lincoln a Lincoln during the Lincoln sales event. Get exceptional offers on the 2013 Lincoln MKZ and your first month's payment compliments of the Lincoln Motor Company. Hi, everybody. Good morning. I'm Thomas Roberts. Developing news at the top of the hour today on the agenda. Two weeks until the start of his trial and the case, which is the state of Florida versus George Zimmerman, is in court for what could be the most crucial hearing to date. And a judge just moments ago denying the request to delay the start of the trial. That was a defense request. You're looking at live pictures inside that courtroom in Sanford, Florida. Today, the judge and attorneys, they're hashing out how this trial will unfold and what the jury is going to be able to hear. Zimmerman, who has pleaded not guilty and claims self-defense, is not in that courtroom today. Even as his attorneys sought to delay the trial, they're fighting to include evidence that could be considered damaging to the character of the victim, teenager Trayvon Martin. Evidence including possible past marijuana use by Trayvon Martin and details of the suspension that had him out of school on the day that he died. All of which we found out this morning is going to be blocked from the courtroom. The state is seeking to prohibit the defense from making any reference to the fact that Trayvon Martin had at any time been suspended from school. It will not be mentioned at all without a uh, prior ruling of the court. Any communications or evidence that Trayvon Martin had used marijuana in the past, we're asking the court to exclude that. Previously used marijuana, the state's motion will be granted. That will not come in. And among the most compelling of the issues that was put before the judge today in a case that's already seen a lot of intense media scrutiny, how do you keep a jury impartial, anonymous, and away from the press? The concern um, that I have is, again, in making sure that within the context of extraordinarily high profile and highly publicized case, that the six people who really need to do their job on this case fairly and impartially are as protected from those external pressures as we can make them. I don't know how that's physically going to, how we're going to do that. Just from a logistics standpoint, how are you going to sequester for, what, three, four weeks? We're going to book people into hotels or somewhere? To, it's, it's impossible. Joining me right now is NBC's Kerry Sanders, who is outside that courtroom in Sanford, Florida. Kerry, good morning. Before we get started, though, I want to mention to our viewers that George Zimmerman has sued NBC Universal for defamation, and the company has strongly denied his allegations. A lot of fast-moving parts this morning in court, but Kerry, let's start with what we do know and what just happened moments ago, the fact that the judge denied any delay. And that means that things are set for two weeks from now. Uh, in that Monday morning, there will be 500 potential jurors who will be summoned here to the courthouse in Sanford, Florida, and they will walk in and they will begin what's called the voir dire process. That is where uh, the prosecutors and the defense get to interview the potential jurors. In this particular case, the judge has ordered that there will be no names released and that the cameras will not be allowed to show the face of the potential jurors in the courtroom. 500 people coming into the courthouse with cameras everywhere. There will be pictures, no doubt, taken of them going into the courthouse. That's one thing that the uh, judge did not address. There will be a hearing on how this is all going to be handled. Uh, there is an attorney here representing the media. Florida has a very open record state where just about everything is presented for public inspection, which means that cameras and reporters can show and reveal just about everything in the judicial process. So this is somewhat unusual, however, not unprecedented. Kerry, is the defense having a bad morning so far, not getting the delay that they requested? They wanted to be able to use that time to gather more evidence and also a lot of the evidence issues concerning Trayvon Martin not going to be considered, not going to be brought up in the courtroom yeah. when they're trying to bring up issues with potential past marijuana use and things like that. Yeah, things are not necessarily going their way, but um, it is not sort of set in stone that like past marijuana use will not necessarily make its way back into the courtroom or photographs like these. These are photographs uh, taken from Trayvon Martin's uh, cell phone. And you can see in these pictures that he's uh, blowing smoke. There's pictures of a marijuana plant. There's pictures of a pistol. The judge ordered that that will not be included in the opening statements to the jury, but 
it may work its way into the course of this case at some point. And a lot of that has to do with where things go with witnesses on the stand. An example, if Trayvon Martin's, uh, if the question comes up, why was Trayvon Martin in Sanford? A lot of people have lost track of this, but he didn't live here. He lived in Miami. Why was he in Sanford visiting his father who was with his girlfriend? Well, it was because he had been suspended from school and he'd been suspended from school for marijuana use. If the state in somehow brings up that question, then it may need to be answered to the jury's satisfaction and the judge will rule, she says, at that time of whether the defense can bring it up. So while it won't be included in the opening statements, uh, uh, Thomas, we may indeed see it part of this case. And Carrie, real quickly, George Zimmerman not in that courtroom today. Why is that? Do we know? Uh, I don't have a specific answer as to why he's not obligated to be in the courtroom, and so he's not here today. Kerry Sanders reporting from Sanford, Florida. Kerry, thanks so much. I want to bring into our conversation now Paul Henderson, a prosecutor. And Paul, as a prosecutor, and you're hearing what's going on this morning, a lot of fast-moving developments, but the judge is being very decisive in her rulings. What do you make of the character evidence the defense has been trying to get submitted in the court today for trial and the fact that the judge has already ruled out most of the pieces of evidence, such as Trayvon Martin's school records? You know, it was pretty predictable, but I'm disappointed that what they tried to present was evidence that they knew or should have known was never going to be allowed in this courtroom. And so to me, it's a disingenuous attempt to taint the jury pool, to try and portray their client in a more favorable manner by messing up the uh, victim in this case, are trying to make him look bad. But they knew ahead of time. I, I feel like they knew. Paul, because of the way our system works in this country, isn't George Zimmerman afforded and shouldn't have the best defense possible and this would be the case that they're trying to present to be able to paint the picture of what they're up against here who was Trayvon Martin he absolutely uh, is entitled to that uh, I think he's going to have a good defense uh, I think you have to weigh and balance though what is legal and I believe the lawyers in this case knew better they knew that there's not a high likelihood or any likelihood that a lot of the evidence that they included in their in limine motions which becomes a public record because they're filed as part of those records right and it gets disseminated in the media but I know that these lawyers knew better I know that they knew that there was not a high likelihood that any of that evidence could be released right in fact that's why I think the prosecution in this case asked for the third time for a gag order to try and restrict what the defense team is putting out into the public even in these motions uh, because it's not relevant it's not probative it's actually prejudicial and that's exactly why the judge kept all of that evidence out all right so since Trayvon Martin's shooting Paul it came to the forefront uh, certainly uh, a lot of conversations in this country have been had and creates a visceral reaction for a lot of people but when we look at the evidence and talk about that there is a question of whose voice is heard in the background of a 911 call whose voice is heard calling out for help and if both sides are able to agree on voice analysis experts and, and one in general is there a chance that the identity of that person screaming could really close the case or are there other prominent pieces of evidence that could sway for either side is it really all down to the voice who was calling for help uh, it really is one of the linchpins in this case and obviously the prosecution has their experts already lined up and they've turned that information over what you're seeing now is the defense team trying to challenge that expert and challenge uh, the prosecution's conclusion that it is Trayvon Martin's voice and the reason that that's important is because they know that that's going to be very influential to a jury to make a determination as to who was calling for help right because when you're evaluating who was the aggressor in a fight or who was acting inappropriately in a conflict one of the things that you're going to be listening for is, is who was actually screaming out asking for aid and assistance and in this case I think what we're going to see is a continued fight mm -hmm. over that tape and a continued fight challenging the prosecution's witness and analysis determining that it was Trayvon Martin that was actually the one calling for help asking for assistance and being abused or threatened or being fought uh, and ultimately obviously being shot uh, in this case and that's why it's going to be important Prosecutor Paul Henderson, thanks so much for joining us. And I'm just getting word the court is over for the day. It's going to yes. resume on the 6th. But the big development from this morning is the fact that the judge has denied a delay that was requested by the defense. So that case 
will go to trial in two weeks. Any minute from now, President Obama will arrive in New Jersey where he's going to get a first-hand look at the recovery from Superstorm Sandy. Well, just as he did in the days after Sandy struck in October, the president will tour beach communities devastated by Sandy with Republican Governor Chris Christie, who might try to succeed him in the White House, some people think. Many Republicans, they're still frustrated by last year's tour just days before the election, where the president and the governor famously exchanged glowing praise for each other. I cannot thank the president enough for his personal concern and compassion for our state and for the people of our state. I think the people of New Jersey recognize uh, that he has put his heart and soul into making sure that uh, the people of New Jersey bounce back uh, even stronger than before. So I just want to thank him for his extraordinary leadership uh, and partnership. All right, so that was October. Fast forward to today. Joining us now from Asbury Park, New Jersey, NBC's Peter Alexander. So, Peter, the political odd couple, as they're referred to, they are back yeah. together once again. And certainly what a difference, you know, six, seven months can make there on the Jersey Shore. Yeah, Thomas, in many ways, this is sort of a second act for this political odd couple, as I think you put it pretty well. Chris Christie and the president will be together. The president's supposed to be here.